The first month of 2022 is in the books and our housing inventory is continuing to trend down while the prices are continuing to go up. What is happening to our market? We'll talk about all of that right after this intro. <laughs> Folks, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Here we talk about buying, selling, and investing in real estate in Southern Utah, as well as working, living, and playing right here in St. George. So if you're thinking about relocating to this area, this channel is for you. Stick around. In today's video, we're going to discuss our current real estate inventory and tell you what you should be doing if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate right now. The common theme right now is we're seeing very, very little active inventory on the market. What are you seeing out there? What What's happening with our buyers? It's a tough time to be a buyer in this market right now with such low inventory. Um, there's not a lot on the market and it seems to be trending down every month. So what's going on? Why aren't we seeing any new listings? What's happening to our inventory? That's a great question. So there's a couple of reasons why our market is so dire for listings right now. Um, well, first of all, people are kind of burnt out from the holidays. It's, it's awesome to have your family in town for Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve, but after a while, you just kind of feel like taking vacation. So a lot of sellers are not putting homes on the market in St. George right now because they're out of town. They're away on a holiday. They're, they're actually taking a break after a break just so they could kind of decompress and unwind. Second big reason is our demand is far outpacing supply right now. The builders are not able to build houses fast enough. Uh, there's some delays with supplies. You know, some builders used to turn out houses between four to six months, you know, nine months tops. And now average new build takes about nine to 12 months, which is still not horrible, but it is longer. So the, the supply is not able to catch up to demand. And the third reason is the parade of homes. So St. George parade of homes, if we bring it up on the screen here so our viewers can see what we're talking about. So St. George Parade of Homes usually takes place third week of February. And this February, it will be, what is it, the 18th through the 28th, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there will be lots of beautiful homes that are, and if, if, if you're new to Southern Utah, if you're just looking at this for the first time, so Braid of Homes is a huge event, usually has about 30 homes. I think this year it will have 27 homes, 29, 29 homes. Mm -hmm. I stand corrected. So these homes will range anywhere. I think the cheapest one is 495. There's usually a handful of homes that are kind of just the, the builder's ability to showcase their best product. And of course they go up to, I think, the most expensive this year will be right around $6 million. Is that right? Um, if you scroll, five. I think if you scroll all the way down. I'm not in any specific order of price, but I'm seeing. I saw one in the sixes. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it looks like one of the most expensive properties in this year's parade of homes will be a $6 million home. Now, while while we are on the topic, I wanted to let you guys know that we will be going live. And I just went down to the Board of Realtors and picked up these tickets. Of course, I'm not going to be able to pick them up smoothly, but oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> so um, I picked up 10 Parade of Homes tickets, which we will be raffling off on on this channel, we'll be going live and I haven't quite figured out, I'm not really good with these raffles, but between the two of us, we'll figure out a fair way to have 10 of our lucky viewers um, be able to get a free free ticket to the Parade of Homes. So we focused enough on the Parade of Homes. So how, what, what significance does this have to our market? So during the Parade of Homes, um, one, one big thing that happens, it's, it's actually a huge event. Um, lots and lots of people come to St. George from Northern Utah, from California, from 
Las Vegas, from pretty much all the surrounding states. Anybody that's thinking about moving that wants to see what are some of the new trends. And, you know, not, not everybody is necessarily a, a home buyer, but the local belief is that during the parade of homes, and we do, it's not just a belief, we normally see a spike, a significant spike in our market uh, with the total volume of sales and the listings naturally go up. And people so, just like hold out until the parade of homes and right at like right before, during, right after the parade of homes is when you'll, you'll see a lot more inventory on our market. I'm curious to see what that actually is, um, how much that will bring, but it just brings a lot of attention to Southern Utah in general, the parade of homes does. So people will hold out and wait to list their homes. Yeah, I've, I've literally time. heard uh, sellers tell me that they were, they were holding out to wait to put their home in the market right as the parade of homes happens. So during that week, we typically see a spike in inventory. And so all of the homes that we just talked about, all 29 homes, are throughout southern utah so pretty much saint george and like probably about a 30 mile radius like 30 mile surrounded radius between uh saint george washington santa clara ivans hurricane throughout various communities so that spread of homes provides uh, a significant amount of marketing for the sellers and if you happen to own a property and you are holding out to list it on a market there is your tip, so. Well, because yeah, people are driving <laughs> all around. Like they're going yeah. through all the communities. So people list their homes and will do open houses during yep. that time since people are already going through all the parade of homes. They're in a the mood to look at homes. Yeah, so then they're advertising their signs everywhere that come look at my home too. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good strategy. And there's also a decent amount of signs. So like if you arrive in St. George during that time, just driving around, you cannot miss the parade of home signs. So even if you, are in this community and you you knew nothing about the Parade of Homes, you are bound to see a couple dozen signs that say Parade of Homes this way. And you know, you drive into the neighborhood, you're already looking at houses. So it seems like logically this is just kind of an organic way to drive more traffic to your listing if you're thinking about selling it. So that was that was your free tip in this video for for the sellers. So if you're thinking about listing your home, if you've been holding out um, and of course, reach out to us. We will give you a complimentary, complimentary market analysis to kind of let you know what your home may be worth in today's real estate market. So, and help us solve this crisis with inventory. <laughs> <laughs> let us let us add your home to the MLS. Let us net you top dollar and be a part of the solution to this problem. However. The next problem that you will likely face if you're thinking about selling your home right now is purchasing a new home. So let's let's take a look at some of the numbers and um, see what our market looked like this January. I'm actually really curious to see. Okay, so our absorption rate is just about a month, a month, a month supply on the market. So if Nobody, if there were no new listings, we would run out of all of our current listings in one month. Like 0.97 months. So yeah, almost less, less than 30 days of inventory. Yeah. And it looks like our median sale price is 529.5 um, compared to last year at 402.535. So that's... That's a 31% increase to a median sale price. So we, we literally went from $402,000 for a median sale price to 529.9. That's a pretty significant jump. And you know, so part, part of it, uh, and we don't like to get into politics in this channel, but you know, we could all thank um, part of what President Brandon is doing and the inflation. And according to uh, the Fed, our current inflation rate is at seven percent however housing across the border i think is up by nearly 30 percent and used car market nearly 40 uh fuel pretty much everything everything is up so part of it is market appreciation part of it is a hyperinflation that we're seeing so the candle is somewhat burning from two ends it's not it's not just that the homes are appreciating at a crazy rate here it's also that the dollar is able to afford a lot less what advice do you have for all? We've had a lot of clients reach out to us. They're keeping an eye, you know, we've set them all up on searches. They're keeping an eye on the market. And we've had a lot of clients reach out to us saying they're waiting for for the 
for the home prices to come down. They're waiting for everything to settle down. Do you think it's going to settle down? Do you think prices are going to come down a little bit? Sorry, if you guys are hearing some really crazy gremlin sounding noises in the background, Meatball is currently digging into his bed. I think he's he's good now. So, <laughs> so advice I have for the buyers that are sitting on the fence and uh, sitting on the fence in general is dangerous business because we've had a number of folks that literally got priced out of the market. And, um, you know, in, in all reality, we had a number of folks that said, well, you know, this, this market is going to correct, that it can't rally uh, to the moon forever. It, it's just not sustainable. It's not going to happen. And, you know, part, there's just partly truth. And while we don't hold a crystal ball and we can't tell you exactly what the future will bring, I could tell you this. So, and I, I use this example all the time. If you talked to me on the phone recently, I had probably mentioned it. There's a local um, local taco shop. Um, what's the name of that place? Del Taco. There is a <laughs> there is a Del Taco that is trying to hire employees at twenty dollars an hour, and I don't think that anybody's jumping on it because uh, just driving past that location, I, I stop at that ga gas station every now and again. I have seen that flyer, their employment flyer, for twenty dollars an hour. So with the current um, job market and literally every business hiring, it seems like the framers and general contractors, general laborers are not really showing up to a job site for less than $25, $27 an hour. The cost of materials is also continuing to increase as we're seeing strange things going on with logistics, strange things with global logistics and supply of stuff that's coming in on the boat. And it seems like with you know the, the spec houses that we're building and the spec houses that the builders are building for our clients, it seems like every other week there is a shortage of, of something new. It's, it's, it's always something random. If it's not windows, it's garage doors or appliances. it's blinds, appliances. So with, with all of this going on, and the only thing I could tell you to, to kind of take a peek into the future is that we know two things for sure, is the cost of supplies is not coming down, the cost of labor is not coming down anytime soon, and we're not making any more new land. So the land is getting more developed and we're starting to see smaller lots getting sold for a higher price. So if you're thinking, thinking about purchasing a home and you're, you're thinking that the market is going to calm down, in, in my honest opinion, this current market and you know, slash economy slash supplies is not conducive of the market coming down anytime soon. But let's let's take a look at uh, the numbers and just see see what the rest of that looks like. So another thing um, important thing to note is that the median combined days of the market right now is about fourteen days. Um, looks like last year it was ten, um, but. It's, it's hard to say because we don't have a lot of homes. I'd have to run a report and see how many homes do we even have on the market that's under a million. Well, because there's more higher end homes on our market and higher end homes, you know, a million plus tend to sit on the market a little longer. So, but it seems like, what would you say? Everything under what price flies off and- I'd say everything under 600. Like goes under in a day or two? Yeah, easily. Well, uh, you know, a day or two if if it's priced really well and if uh, and keep in mind if the folks that are sitting on a fence right now there's armies and we are starting to see more and more people that are just kind of sitting and waiting for the right thing to come up it's not necessarily the wrong strategy i do not recommend that you purchase something you don't love right like if if you look at the market and so the the current total how many total listings do we have right now if you if you hop over to that other tab um Let's see. So let's go with. So if we look at just active listings. Active, and then obviously our area. Um, Greater, Greater St. George and Hurricane. If to, yeah. Okay, and that's like 40 mile radius of everything around St. George. Um, listing class. Let's do single family and new construction. And you just leave it at that. So this is all price ranges. This is everything between St. George and Hurricane Valley, kind of the surrounding areas. Our, our MLS market will also show stuff that's like way out, you know, like 
all the way in Cedar City or Parowan. So we're, we're stuff like two hours away where it's yeah. So I'm just doing what's so we relevant. We excluded that. That's what's relevant to somebody that's shopping in Southern Utah. So there are a total of 241 listings. And to, to my earlier point, if you find yourself you know, shopping in this market and you just don't see anything you love because if you narrow it down to three car garage under 600,000 in a specific neighborhood, there may be three. And you look at these three homes and you just still love any of them. So you're not alone. There are lots and lots of people that are kind of waiting for the right thing to come up. And it's not necessarily your own strategy, but that also dictates the way the market is shaping. So if if there's 10 people that are all ready and able and this one perfect home comes up, it tends to fly off pretty quickly. Uh, but what's also interesting is if we, if we go back to that other screen and you look at uh, the median or average list price, average list price in January of 2022 was over a million dollars. That's insane. So what's also beginning to happen is we're seeing a lot more it's it's a good and a bad thing at the same time. The good thing is that there are a lot more nicer homes that are hitting the market because if if a developer uh, subdivides a neighborhood and there is you know ten quarter acre lots, each lot comes with a premium. And it's a nice neighborhood. The developer can typically make more money by selling a, a larger square footage, nicer home. So it helps a little bit more with supply of nicer inventory, but. If, if you're shopping in the budget price range, it's a little bit tougher because fewer home builders are building smaller homes that are in the more affordable sector. So that's, that's kind of still a pressing issue. Um, so if you, if you scroll down to uh, sold listings, so for instance, in January, if you look at stuff between 1 million and I guess the largest activity that we actually saw was between half a million and 749,000. There was 116 listings sold. And that's out of a grand total of 316 listings. But if we look much below that, like if you look at, I don't know, let's say four to 500,000. Let's see, 22, 22 homes sold. So there was just 22 homes in that, uh, in that category. So. Uh, we had a total of 316 homes that were sold in January of 2022. Mm -hmm. 423 went under contract. Um, looks like 417 total active listings and 378 new listings hit the market. Which is trending what about 12% down from uh, 2021. So we saw more inventory hit the market in January of 2021. Again, uh, I wouldn't say that you know the situation is critical. It is pretty, pretty normal for a typical January in Southern Utah, or what what's become. It's like our. It's one of our slower months. So. Slower months in terms of inventory. So if if you're thinking about selling your home right now, is a great time to do it because you typically have fewer competitors. And as we mentioned earlier, there's a decent amount of people that are waiting for the right listing to hit the market. And if it's priced right, there's a great chance that you may receive multiple offers and this home would be off the market in a matter of hours, if not hours, just a couple of days. So you can, you can kind of base your move on, on that. Like if you're able to sell right and still capitalize on buying something because at, at the time of recording this video prime uh interest rate is at just three point three point six two which is substantial uh lift from what we've seen before jerome powell made a statement that the fed is going to dial back on quantitative easement meaning that they're going to start printing less money or hopefully stop printing money and the other measure was three distinctive interest rate hikes that will affect all consumer spending. So uh, overwhelming supply of credit and overwhelming supply of money is pretty much an equal thing. So this, it, it just becomes, um, well, it's the definition of hyperinflation, really. You guys know this. So it, it, it causes for the dollar to lose its value. And this is the government's uh, natural response to dial back and hopefully you know, stop or pause or slow down the inflation. So we're, we're inevitably going to see that. So with that being said, if you're thinking about buying something, if you're shopping right now, there's still plenty of great options. And we're starting to see some creative um, financing products. 
Some lenders are offering 40 year mortgages with a 10 year balloon. Although I would recommend probably staying away from any kind of adjustable rate mortgages unless you really have a plan to pay things off because anything that's adjustable means that it's only a matter of time before it goes up because <laughs> we're probably not going to see interest rates where they're currently at based on everything that we're you know we're hearing and seeing so if you're able to lock something down right now and take advantage of the current interest rates i still think that it may be a great option just based on where they're at right now if you're thinking and waiting you know what what happens <clears throat> what happens if the interest rates go up um i personally don't see it yet that the interest rates in the next year or two are going to substantially affect a market in terms of a correction or adjustment just based on the rate of inflation and uh, the cost of labor. I just, I just don't see it. I just don't see it happening if, if it's costing the builders so much money to build new inventory. I think that the, the new inventory is possibly going to control the market more or less. And if you're thinking about selling right now, think about what are you going to buy once you sell because that inevitably will probably become a concern. Yeah. Uh, we do have a solution for the inventory problem. We have a couple of great relationships with a couple of awesome local builders and we typically tend to find out where things are going before they hit MLS. So that's that could be a good competitive advantage if you're thinking about building in this market or you know if you're not if you're not eager to move in like tomorrow, um, that may be a good option. So we have a couple builders that are able to help with that uh, within the next six to nine months. What would you? What advice would you give to our buyers that are thinking of purchasing a lot and building? Um, I mean, a lot of builders right now they're not. They're, they are starting to make more accommodations with letting you pick some selections, but for the most part, everything goes up as a spec. And you just yeah. you buy it, you buy it as is, and they wait to list the spec homes till they're sixty to thirty days from completion. And that's a solid point. So um, a, a little while ago, just within probably the last six months or so, the builder mentality is starting to change a little bit. A lot of builders had to go through a strange adjustment as the market changed and things became more expensive and more unpredictable. Well, it's hard for them to like price a home. Yeah, because nobody... before they get that before they get that near the end because the cost of supplies were a, all it's over a for-profit business right they want to make sure that after they finish building that house and 2008 burnt out a lot of builders because it created this weird circumstance where some builders were into their homes so much that by the time they sold them they were still upside down so that that kind of raised the guard for a lot of builders but it also created kind of a, a negative impact to how real estate contracts are structured from new construction perspective so there were a lot of crazy contracts with escalation clause where if the cost of lumber or materials goes up you as a buyer may be responsible for the increase and often it could push you outside of your pre-approval limit, creating a whole other challenge where now you have some earnest money committed or a construction deposit and you're just not able to close on that home because it literally pushes you out of what you're able to afford. So a lot of builders are able to calculate a little bit better because they've been dealing with this for close to two years now. And there are two solutions. So they typically try to order all the materials and you have very little customization, which in some cases is a great thing because you don't want to spend an old, sometimes it's an all day affair to go through the design center appointments. So these builders, they select kind of middle of the pack, more premium finishes that- well, They're selecting everything that everybody's wants yeah. anyways. Like any of the specs we've taken our clients into, they've never had anything negative to say. Like it's, it's what's it's what everybody loves right yeah. now. Yeah, and they, they have a good sample size. So these builders, they work with a large number of buyers that have been through the selection process and you get the newest the coolest the the trendiest things that tend to be you know agreeable and were selected by uh, a number of buyers so that alleviates some of the stress and once those selections are made typically the escalation clause are no longer in place and if you want to avoid that altogether you can often you know just just get in a position where um you find a spec that's 30 to 60 days out from completion that's when it gets listed but then you kind of run into a similar challenge with you know chasing existing inventory where it it may be that you're not the only 
offer that's on the table and you're sometimes competing with multiple offers, but we have lots of great strategies for that. And folks, if you're shopping in this market and it sounds like we just unloaded kind of a lot of information in this video. So if you have any questions about anything that we just covered, anything that we didn't cover, if you're thinking about just starting this process, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, if you need any help at all, just please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Our contact information is in the description below this video. Also, you should stay tuned for our live videos. Um, let's know what you guys think. I, I feel like with this market being as dynamic as it is right now, how, how often should we do this? It's been changed. Like we will have, we will have clients go under contract and then a month later, like within, before they even close, the prices have already gone up a little bit. Yeah. So then it's like, okay. And then we're constantly, you know, and that some of this is with new builds and, um, I don't know, it's kind of all over the place, but you know, by the time we close on something and then if we have another client the next month looking, it's like prices have gone up. They're just slowly kind of creeping up. I mean, so this I, can't go on forever, but. I, I feel like with the way the current mar market is structured, maybe we could do a slightly shorter format, but bring you this information yeah. maybe on a weekly basis. So stay tuned for our live videos. Um, if you have any ideas on how we should raffle off these parade tickets, let us know. We've got like 10 of them and we are eager to get rid of them. We would like for our viewers to be able to attend the Parade of Homes to appreciate the greatness of this beautiful Southern Utah community and all the awesome homes. Like it will blow your mind. Um, even being in this profession, being in this industry, you know, after seeing so many homes, you feel like you've seen it all. And then every year. So we've been doing this since 2019. Yeah, I think we started in 19. The so homes. yeah, Parade of Homes. Oh, yeah. We've been we've been providing coverage, and we'll 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 provide some links in the description for this video, so you can check out some of those videos. Of course, we already have a plan in place for 2022, and 2022 might be a, a challenging year because it's the last week of February, and our our baby Michonne Michonne is due by March 5th. So. I may be editing and uploading some videos from the hospital, but I promise you guys, we will cover this event. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for our live uh, updates and market updates and ticket giveaways. We've got so much more great content coming to this channel. If you found this video useful, please share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you all so much for tuning in to check this out and we will see you in the next one.